Good evening again. If you would like to open your scriptures at the New Testament and the Gospel according to Luke, we shall be turning to some uh, verses here in a moment or two. On the 8th of April just past, it's reckoned that 300 million people across the continent of North America and millions across the world in homes and in houses and hills and in fields viewed the solar lunar eclipse. And as the moon blocked out the sun, plunged the earth into total darkness for three to four minutes, from Mexico to Canada, from the Pacific to the Atlantic Ocean, from the heat of the midday sun, the temperatures dropped to a zero. Some people shivered. Some were dizzy and nauseating and sick. And others said that they were gripped with a great fear. Badgers and bears and foxes and other predators of the nocturnal nature and species fled out of their dens and out of the thickets to discover in a few minutes they had to scurry back again when the light came on. Street lights and car lights and exit lights all came on. Whenever I heard of this and viewed a little bit of it, I turned to the Word of God to see what God had to say about this total eclipse that so many are talking about. In Amos chapter 8 and verse 9, I read these words. I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will bring darkness upon the earth in a clear day. I read in the book of Job, the oldest book in Scripture, these words, they met with darkness in the daytime and they groped in noonday as it was night. You see, men love darkness rather than light because their, de their, their deeds are evil. And they drank and they reveled and they cheered and they blasphemed as they watched the solar movement of the moon blocking out the sun. In Joel 2 and verse 31, we read these words, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and terrible day of the Lord. In Isaiah 13 and verse 10, it says the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. These are only some of the Old Testament scriptures regarding the eclipse of the sun and the darkness covering the earth. The interesting thing about most or nearly all of them is that it has to do with judgment. It has to do with the wrath and the anger of God. But what does the Lord Jesus Christ say about what is happening in the world today. And in Luke 21 and verse 25, we read these words. Here are the words of the Lord Jesus. And remember, these are prophecies concerning these very days in which we live in. Well, Matthew 24 and Mark 13 and Luke 21, there's a plethora of signs there coming from the Lord to look out for in these last days of the dispensation of grace in which the church and which the world is now, is now in. In verse 25, he says, and, the, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth this dress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring. Now I hear someone saying, and it's often said to me, that, well, these things have been going on for millenniums. There's been earthquakes and famines. Yes, that may be so, but never have they been all coming together like the way they're coming together now. 
There's an average of 55 earthquakes every day. A quarter of the world goes to bed hungry at night. The perfect illustration of this being, uh, these things being a warning and a message from God to us, to the church, to wake up and to the world to take heed that God is in charge and the creator of the sun and the moon and the stars can do what he likes with them whenever he wants to do. But yet it speaks to us very clearly. It's very interesting that just a couple of days before the eclipse went over New York, that an earthquake shook it, and it shook the United Nations Assembly that were gathered together, ruling down on the uh, Israel and making decisions against Israel, which is hated by them. And it's very interesting to see, if you watch your television, you'll see that the table shook and the pens shook in their hands and fear gripped them. I want to say to you today that Israel is most, has never been hated like the way it has, is hated at this moment, even more than the time of the, of, the, of the Holocaust. We're in very dark and we're in very dangerous and we're in very last days. And so we need to take heed to the signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars. These signs in heaven and on earth that we're seeing all around us these days is the Lord trying to get our attention. He wants us to look up and then he wants us to look down. Because in verse 26 it says here, men's heart failing them for fear. And for looking for after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. These things that are coming and have come upon the earth, the wars, the famines, the pain and the suffering and the darkness, do you know the 32 wars are being fought at this moment on the planet earth? And then there's a word here Jesus says about with perplexity. That word perplexity means to be driven into wit's end corner, not knowing where to turn. And of course, we know that the world is like, the Bible describes the world in these last days as a, a drunken man struggling and babbling about and full of confusion. Job says, I'm full of confusion. The sea and the waves roaring, oh, that's tsunamis. These things are all around us today. Shall we hear them regularly on the news? Uh, Isaiah says that the world is like the troubled sea casting up its mire and dirt. So the Lord is calling our attention in these days and through the eclipse, this solar eclipse, this lunar eclipse, he's calling our attention to look up and he's calling our attention to look down. And he's calling our attention to look in because it says then in the next verse, in verse 26, it says, the hearts of men failing them because of fear, fearfulness. A fearfulness and trembling has come, come upon us. And there are many that are driven with fear today of the things that are happening all around us. Verse 27, he says this, and then shall see the Son of Man coming in clouds and with great glory. These are the beginning of troubles, the beginning of sorrows. That's what the, the, the word means, the birth pangs, the contraction that a woman has. They get worse and worse as it comes to near the birth. Those are the days that we're living in, my friend, when the world is in turmoil. And then it says this in verse 20, 28, and when you see these things become to come to pass, then look up and lift up your head doesn't say just lift up your eyes. That's what they were doing there in millions. They were lifting up their eyes and they were looking at the sun and at the moon and the stars and God had them gazing up. But it says lift up your head. And I thank God as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ today that I can stand strong and firm and tall and lift up my head and look up that my Redeemer draweth nigh. I'm not, not afraid. I thank God I have a Savior. I thank God that I'm waiting on the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. My fear is gone. 
under the blood of Jesus that day that I got saved down there in the county for manna. Thank God it doesn't tell us just to lift up our eyes, but to lift up our heads and look up for Jesus Christ that's coming again and he's going to end this whole blessed situation that's going on. The word of God tells us he may come in the evening, he may come at midnight, he may come at cock crow, or he may come in the morning. It tells us when Jesus comes, he'll come like a thief in the night. He'll come, he'll come like, like, in the twinkling of an eye. Two shall be in the bed, one taken, another left, man gone and wife left. Two shall be grinding at the mill in the factory, one taken and the other left. Two shall be in the field, one taken and the other left. One at night, one in the morning, one in the evening. I wonder where you stand tonight as you see all these things around us. When you see all these signs coming together and closing in in darkness around us, my friend, how do you stand and far, as far as your soul's salvation is concerned? For if Jesus Christ were to burst the clouds and descend the slopes of the sky today and you're not saved and born again by the Spirit of God, you'll be left behind and you'll face the Antichrist and you'll face 666 either in your forehead or your right arm and you'll not be able to buy or sell and you'll go into this awful tribulation period when there will be no hope for you. Now is the time. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Flee to the Lord Jesus Christ and seek him while you may and while you have time uh, to do that. Now, I don't know what I'm going to say now is, is, is right or true, but many prophetical scholars believe that this latest eclipse is a final warning of God to America before the judgment falls. Now, I know from studying prophetical scriptures that the US, USA is not in the final prophecies of scripture. But it's not the USA that we should be looking at, and many are looking at Biden and Trump and all that's going on. It's Israel we need to be watching in these days because they're the key to all Bible prophecy. On April the 8th, the, this eclipse that passed over seven cities and towns called Nineveh. Now, I haven't researched this, but I am told that there were seven cities and towns called Nineveh that this eclipse passed over. And one of those towns or cities, I'm not sure which it is, is called the Rapture. Many are, many are looking into this and... Uh, they're talking about Jonah. In 40 days, he went into Nineveh and called judgment down upon them. And he called them to repent, and they repented, and the judgment was stayed. Some are telling us that the USA, within 40 days, which would bring us to the 18th of May, about the 40 days, that judgment will fall upon America, or the rapture will happen. I can't agree with that because that's putting a time on it and no man knows the day or the hour. And as for the other, I don't know. But what I do know is this. And what is on my heart as I close this message to you tonight, what I know is this, is on the 8th of April, in the early afternoon, when the moon leveled up with the sun, there's a ring formed, and you can see it if you look it up, there's a ring formed around the moon. And that ring by scientists is called the corona. That's the Latin word for crown. And the crown speaks of the symbol of authority and of power. We all know that word from the coronavirus and what power and what authority it had. It shook the world and shook the church and sent us scurrying in behind curtains and doors with fear, which was nothing but of the devil and deceived hundreds and thousands and thousands of people. And so that word corona is the word crown, which is the word authority. And I suggest, in closing, that there's two messages to learn from the April the 8th eclipse. And it is this. Number one is to do with the crucifixion. Remember when they massacred and butchered and slew the Lord of glory at the place called Calvary, there was three hours of darkness. 
God shut out the sun and the moon as he struggled there and fought out the battle for our sin and took it upon his own body upon the tree. Remember the plaited, the crown of thorns, the corona, and the hammered it down on his lovely brow as he hung there on the cross, naked, scourged, and spat upon. And sitting down, they watched them there, and they reveled, and they drank, and they shouted, just as they did in the mountains and the hills of North America uh, the other day. And there, crowned with thorns, is the King of the Jews, the King of Israel, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And I love that hymn that we sing here, the head that once was crowned with thorns, Glory to God is crowned with glory now. The second thing is this, not only the crucifixion we should be looking at and thinking about when we see this, but the tribulation. It says in Joel, and the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon shall be turned into blood before that great and terrible day of the Lord. In Revelation chapter 1, we read at the end of the tribulation period, the great battle of Armageddon, my friend, that's coming upon the world without any doubt. Listen to the news. Read your papers. Armageddon spoken about every day. The sum of these days is going to be a nuclear attack. We're heading towards the end as fast as we can go, and the world is out of control. But thank God that he's in charge. The sovereign, eternal God is in charge of the moon and the sun and the stars that he created for his own glory. In Revelation 1, we read that mighty word at the end of all things. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also that pierced him, shall, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Ah, my friend, God's getting us to look up, because every eye will see him. We can understand that very clearly. A hundred years ago, people couldn't understand how every eye was going to see the Lord Jesus when he bore every eye, and that's the two eyes, will see the Lord Jesus when he burst the clouds. Now we can see it now. Can you see it the other day? And men are gazing up into the sky. This same Jesus, he's coming again. And he could burst the clouds at any day and take us home. And glory to God, what a day that will be. I want to say it's not the sun and the moon and the stars that I'm looking for. I'm looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, who saved me all those years ago. I'm looking, not looking for that the stars are for the stars or reading the stars. I thank you. I have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. I thank you for the crown of thorns, the corona that was laid upon my Savior. I thank thee that he's the king, and the king is coming, and he's coming soon, and he's going to lift us out of this old blood-stained, sin-stained, tear-stained world, and he's going to take us home to heaven to be forever with him in the glory. Glory to God. It's great to be saved. It's great to know sins forgiven, peace with God, and assurance with heaven. Thank God, thank God that I'm not looking for the eclipse, but I'm looking for the Savior who's going to come and lift me out and take me home and walk the streets of gold and for all eternity be with them. Good day and God bless you. Amen.